With this video, I will show you the components and options for laying out your bootstrap project, including wrapping containers, the grid system, a flexible media object, and responsive utility classes. Containers are the most basic layout element in Bootstrap and are required when using the default grid system. Containers are used to contain, pad, and center the content within them. While containers can be nested, most layouts do not require a nested container. To illustrate, I will add a navigation bar to a new document. Here we see that the navigation items are contained within a set width. When I click on container, we see the reason why. A fixed container has fixed widths. We also see the green colored sections at the start and end of the container. These denote the active padding that has been set by Bootstrap. When I choose the mobile view, we see that the container is the same width as the mobile view. The padding is still visible. Choosing mobile landscape view, we see that the container is no longer the same size as the view. The same goes for all of the other views. This is because a fixed container bootstrap has set widths for each of the views. When I change the container type to fluid, we see that the container now spans the entire width of the viewport. While this is a great feature, this may not be exactly what is required. To explain, I will quickly add an image to the document. Don't worry about following at this stage. All will be explained as we progress in the series. Within a fixed container, the image looks great in all views. When I change to a fluid container, the image is much too large on larger views. To fix this, I will choose a container type of responsive large. This sets the width of the container to 100% until the large breakpoint is reached. It then changes to a fixed container. So far we have seen that a container wraps and contains the content. It provides basic padding. It centers the content and it can be fixed, fluid or responsive. The responsive types allow a fluid container up to the named breakpoint. This brings us to the next section. The bootstrap grid. The bootstrap grid consists of containers, rows, and columns. Containers surround the whole section of rows and columns. Rows represent a horizontal line of elements. Columns represent the horizontal space that elements take up in a row. There are rules that we need to adhere to if we want the bootstrap grid system to work properly. Containers are required to wrap the rows and columns. Rows are required to wrap the columns and only columns may be an immediate descendant of a row. Content may only be placed within columns. Sure. You can bypass these rules and it may even work for you. In that case, do not expect the grid to work properly. In Wappler, I show the navigation bar as before. In app structure, I click on header. This is a semantic HTML element which is not part of the grid. Semantic elements are useful for visually impaired users who utilize a screen reader. Next comes the first part of the grid called container. This was explained in an earlier part of this video. Clicking on row exposes the 12 column grid system. It also shows the brown colored ends of the row representing the applied margins. It may be handy to know that green is for padding. Brown is for margin. Take note that the column system is related to the row and not to the container or viewport. In the properties panel, we see that the layout is a single column. In the next section of this video, I will show you how you can utilize the different options that are available here. The final piece of the grid is the column. When I choose column, we see an element that has the same dimensions as the row. Instead of margins, we now see padding. There are two handles, one at each end of the column that allow us to modify the column. To resize the column, drag the handle on the right. To offset the column, drag the handle on the left. That is it for this section. But before we continue, have a look at the app structure. Here we have the root node called, app. Then comes a somatic element called, header. This is followed by the grid in the form of, container, row and column. And finally, the content called, navbar. In this case, the container has one row. In the following section, you will see that a container can have many rows. Let's now put into practice what we have learned. Note the view that we are in. After the header, I'll add another semantic element. Called main. Inside main, I'll add a container. 
Inside the container, I'll add a row. Inside the row, I'll add a couple of columns. For this I go to the layout section and finally settle on a sidebar and main content. Inside the sidebar column, I'll add some content. I'll also change the background color to set it apart from the main content. Inside the main column, I'll add the content starting with a title. After the title, I'll add a row and a column. Notice the 12 column system which is spread across the width of the row. As explained before, the column system is related to the row and not to the container. Inside the column comes the content. After this row, I'll add another row. This time I'll choose a layout from the layout section. I want to add some images so I'll choose 6 columns. In each column I'll place an image holder as the content. Notice how the sidebar column has stretched down to the same height as the main column. For the styling of the page, we need to start with the mobile view. Remember that Bootstrap is mobile first. Here we see that there is not enough real estate to accommodate the sidebar. Not only that, the sidebar usually contains information that is less important than the main content. I will therefore place the sidebar after the main content. I assign the order to last. I then resize the sidebar so that it occupies the full width of the viewport. I enlarge the images so that they cover half the viewport each. Adding a bottom margin will space the images. I leave the layout and mobile landscape view the same as portrait view. For the tablet, I want the sidebar as a left column with the main column alongside it. I adjust the sidebar to 4 calls wide. The order is set to first. For the laptop, I'll resize the images to 5 calls wide. Because only two images fit alongside each other, I am left with a white space on the right. This can be rectified by choosing the row. In the layout section, I have a number of choices. I finish up choosing to have the images centered. For larger screens, I want three images alongside each other. I do this by changing the width of each image column to four calls wide. As you can see, I now have a responsive page that looks great in all of the views. This is it for the layout using Bootstrap and Wappler. 
I hope that it has been of use to you. My name is Ben Pleasier. As usual. I will leave important links below.